CataractCoach.com. Femtosecond laser fails to open the capsule. So how do you recover from this and create a capsule rexus? Now look carefully at that red reflex. You can see the femtosecond laser has delivered some energy spots into the anterior lens capsule, but not enough. So what should you do here? Well, of course, no machine's infallible, especially a half million dollar laser, right? And so what you can do in this case is you're gonna need to do a manual capsule rexus. That's why you have those skills. That's why you learned. And when you do this manual capsule rexus, what are the key important points here? Well, think about it. You could already have some opening there of the lens capsule, and the laser makes those kind of small perforations like a postage stamp. So my advice was to be uh, do a large rexus here. Make sure your rexus is larger than that area. Encompass that area of partial laser treatment within your rexus. So if you do a small rexus that's inside those laser spots, what if those areas of capsule where the laser hit, what if they break? Then you can have an uncontrolled situation here. You could have a capsule run out. It could zip over to the posterior capsule. You could have a whole world of trouble. So here, make a generous large rexus at a minimum on top of those spots, but even better, slightly larger than those spots. And by doing that, you're gonna ensure that there's no capsule weakness remaining no capsular perforations that are remaining there. So good job here taking your time, doing a beautiful case. You can see the forceps are marked off so you can measure the size of it. And that's a nice round rex. It looks really quite good. Video has been sped up a little bit here. And now we'll get to the case. The cataract case is gonna be straight, pretty straightforward. Let's watch that at high speed. Now you wanna be careful not to exert too much force on the capsule in case there are any weak spots that are remaining. So we'll speed the video up here to four times the normal speed. There's the cataract, hydrodissection done. There's a golden ring of delineation. Here comes a phaco probe. Let's see the technique. And technique's going to be a groove down the middle. Okay, maybe a stop and chop or a divide and conquer. Sounds reasonable. Looks like a pretty moderate nuclear density. And once that groove is done, okay, crack down the middle and then rotate and another split. And let's see now, a chop. Stop and chop, very nice, very good technique here. And so yeah, you wanna put as little stress as possible on that capsule. Now remember, femtosecond lasers are great. I want you to have all the tools in your toolbox. I want you to learn how to use all these devices, but don't be reliant on any one. Mostly you wanna be reliant on your hands and your surgical judgment. That's what's the most important. Because no machine, like I said, is perfect and sometimes they're gonna break down. So on cortex removal, I would do the area of the previous laser treatment last. So I do the other areas first and do that area last. Like I said, just in case there's some capsule weakness from the laser spots that you inadvertently grab with the IA probe, and then that ends up zipping through and, and ripping the capsule some more. And you certainly don't want that situation. So cleaning up the capsule bag very nicely here. And then at the end, I wanna put the lens and I wanna show you the end of the case because that's how you can judge to decide, hey, is this sufficient? Is it a big rexus? Is it large? What's the actual size? Because, you know, in all likelihood, we're going to put in an optic here that's going to have a six millimeter diameter. So here it is, end of the case. Capsule bag looks nice and clean. Everything looks great. Here's a case where I would not go too, too crazy on the capsule polishing. Looks like there is some sub-incisional lens material there too. You see that? Let's see, has that been removed? Eh, I don't think so. I think you still have some sub-incisional material and some significant degree of it as well. So try to get it out here. Maybe get it, in, get it out after you put the lens in. But yeah, that's a significant degree of lens material. So don't want to leave that in the eye. So now what are we doing? Visco out. Now I'm just coming out. All right. Let's put the visco elastic in to fill up the bag. Rexus looks good. Rexus looks very good. Capsule looks intact. Okay, more IA going in and aspirating in, again, trying to get that sub area. A trick you can do is use the viscoelastic through the side port and inject it and visco dissect the cortex off that way. Here comes a lens, looks like a single piece of acrylic lens, looks like a trifocal design. Get that in the capture bag and let's see our rexus size. Rexus size is gonna be pretty good. It looks like rotating the lens to help free up that lens material, that cortex. That's a good idea, that's a good move. Just be gentle, I don't want too much manipulation in this eye. 
And you can see the Rexa size is pretty good. Here's that capsular polisher being used to also get help free up there, that big honking piece of subincisional cortex. Yeah, you don't want to leave that thing in the eye. Glad you got that up. Good job there. And then, uh, again, I would be very cautious on the capsule polishing here. You want to be on error on the side of conservative judgment. And yeah, the Rexa size looks great. So a beautiful case here. Nice recovery. Remember, learn how to use all these tools. Femtosecond lasers are great, but do you really need them? And if they don't work and they cause an issue, can you, like this young surgeon, recover successfully? Beautiful case. Thank you.